I'm going to talk a little bit about my company, Synlabs. Then I'm going to show you some of the things that we've done, and, uh, and then maybe talk about some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. Uh, first of all, who are we? Well, we're a group of, of engineers, scientists, artists, and designers, uh, molecular gastronomist chefs, uh, roboticists, just a, a, a variety, an astonishing array of really talented individuals who are um, extraordinary in their individual fields, who come together to create exceptional things. And those things are content, right? They're, we are storytellers, like so many wonderful storytellers. We like to tell stories using science and physical events and so forth. Mostly we're brand builders. Create our stuff on behalf of brands who are interested in getting a particular message out. Uh, we've been called the League of Extraordinary Nerds by Fast Company. Um, we've also been called a drinking club with an art problem. And I think that's, that's probably pretty apt. Um, we believe that um, there's an extraordinary interface between art and technology, that art is very much a reflection of the technology of our time, that, that artists are always looking to leverage the tools that are available to them. Um, the typical development process, of course, and I think almost everyone in the room is familiar with this, first you plan, you execute that idea, you evaluate your success, uh, you adjust as necessary to uh, achieve the, the, whatever your definition of success is, and then you iterate that process to continue to move forward, uh, creating something extraordinary. Our process is somewhat similar. Of course, we start out the same way. We plan and we execute. Then we evaluate, is something on fire? If not, then we adjust and we iterate until it is, at which point it's awesome, and then we start again. We're most known, perhaps, for uh, building Rube Goldberg machines. Um, um, a Rube Goldberg machine is the most complicated way to create something uh, exceptional. Uh, so, something, uh, it's the most complicated way, excuse me, to create something simple, uh, to achieve a, a very simple task. And um, this is an example of one of those. We're starting at about two-thirds of the way through a video that we did for the band OK Go. Oh, goodness. So we, we, we like to do crazy things. Um, some quick statistics, I get asked a lot of questions about that particular video, it's obviously available on YouTube. 89 unique interactions, 85 takes to get that um, recorded successfully for the video. Uh, we had three successful runs of the machine. Um, uh, we went to our local hardware store more than 100 times to pick up the pieces to make this thing. Uh, it took us three months to put it together. We lost one high-heeled shoe in the process of making this when one of our engineers came back from dinner and she left her shoes in a pile of stuff and another engineer came along and went, oh, that would make a really good trigger. And before she'd known it, he had screwed it down and used it. <laughs> so uh, you've got to be careful around us. Um, we've destroyed two pianos and more than 10 televisions in that process. Now, in, in making one of these machines, um, the first thing you have to do is identify the initial path. In my case, my initial path started as a young man. I wanted to be a, an actor. And uh, when my parents went away on vacation one day, and when they came back, I'd actually gotten an, an interview and, and ultimately actually gotten a job working on a television series in the United States. Um, they weren't uh, particularly pleased about that, but this was my, I felt my calling, and I really loved performance. Um, there's, um, 
A point, though, where your life makes turns, right? And you have to understand this connections in the role of chance. You also have to make course corrections along the way. For me, at 17, faced with the choice between college and a role in the movie Dead Poets Society, uh, I chose college, um, and it was a good choice, I'm sure. It was a good choice. <laughs> it was a good choice. And I'm going to talk a little bit now, but I'm going to show you guys some of the outtakes and so forth, because, you know, in, in making course corrections, of course, you always encounter challenges and failures, and these are some of our, our failures. Oh, so you do on that, right? Da, da, back up, da, da, back up, da, da. When the morning comes. When the morning comes. So we, we've, we've done quite a few. You, you guys want to see one more? All right, we'll, 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 do, we'll do one more and then we'll move on. <laughs> so the, obviously the car was supposed to stay on the track. Our cameraman actually caught it. So obviously in the process of these things, we encounter a lot of complications. And that's a lot of what we do in the process of making these things and really any of our projects. And uh, managing complications is an important part of, I think, everybody's life. I'm going to show you now one that we did for uh, Google. La vie est là, qui vous prend par le bras, oh la la la, c'est magnifique. Des jours tout bleus, des baisers lumineux. C'est magnifique Donner son cœur Avec un bouquet de fleurs Oh la 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 Mais c'est magnifique Et faire un jour Un mariage d'amour C'est magnifique Google presents the first global online science fair. Thank you. So the complications in that one are, of course, that we wanted it to look like it was an accident happening in a science fair. Um, but we filled that machine with robots and lasers and explosives and electricity and chemical reactions. The, that glow fluid alone, you know, almost got us in trouble with the National Homeland Security people because it was really toxic and explosive and anyway. Um, but, and of course, we were working with animals. Those mice in the beginning are not necessarily cooperative, and that was definitely a problem. And, and that happens. You know, we're always striving to achieve something greater, and that means working with ever more exotic and interesting things. Um, this is a, not a Rube Goldberg machine. This is a project we did for Chevy, and it's somewhat self-explanatory, so I'm just going to let the video roll. On October 19th, 2011, we asked the internet to help us launch the all-new Chevy Sonic from a 110-foot platform. The launch was streamed live on letsdothis.com. To push the car, users had to click on a four-foot cursor hand. Every digital click turned an elaborate gear system in real time and pushed the Sonic closer and closer to the edge. You could check out the launch from any angle you wanted, from gear cam, to pool cam, and even from inside the Sonic itself. 
And while you waited for the car to drop, you could go back in time or check the click stats to see who else was pushing and from where. Within hours, more than 19,000 clicks per minute were being registered. And after nine hours and 2.5 million clicks, this happened. And the all-new Chevy Sonic was launched. Thank you. So that obviously has a lot of challenges. It's live. Um, it's uh, got a, obviously a very complicated physics model. A bungee you know, cord isn't necessarily cooperative. You know, we wanted to hit the water, but we couldn't hit the ground. You know, it's a 35 meter drop and uh, you know, one meter water at the bottom. And you gotta hit the water, but you can't hit the ground. That's tricky. We told them we had to test it. And so I'm, I'm gonna show you now a video that nobody's seen before. Um, this is a test that we did without the bungee cord. I could watch that all day. Uh, <laughs> so that, that one obviously had a lot of very interesting complications. Um, Red Bull um, uh, asked us to do a similar sort of thing for them. Um, I'll just jump right into it. there are, of course, a Rube Goldberg machine with people. We had a very short shoot with all of these extraordinary extreme athletes from Red Bull. So we had to get everything done in five hours. So we used 50 cameras. 
I mean, we used every camera we could think of. Those are just some of the GoPros that we used in the process. Um, it was an incredibly exhausting experience, but it was also incredibly rewarding. Um, a quick um, talk, I'm gonna just talk over this as a project we did for Target. This is time-lapse of the installation of this piece. Um, this is a huge 16,000 square foot installation we did for Target who was looking to create a Christmas experience the month of December last. And um, this is, um, they wanted basically Disney level of finish. They wanted, um, uh, you know, really extraordinary interactive uh, ball machine, which is what you're seeing finished here. Um, they wanted a pirate ship with a ball pit moat. Um, the challenge, of course, is that no single piece could be larger than a meter um, because that was the size of the door uh, going in. So uh, we had to really figure out how to puzzle piece that thing together and, and make it something extraordinary. So the, there are, in, in our business, we, we think of the three C's, that uh, it's important to connect with people, that is our audience, our clients, whatever. This is not probably altogether unfamiliar to you. We need to communicate a message, whatever that is. And if you notice, none of our... Uh, videos have language. There's no words spoken at all, um, with the exception, of course, of the case study of the Chevy video. But the, the, the bottom line is that our stuff can be enjoyed independent of language, and, and that's really important for us to, in order to communicate successfully. In order to achieve this, of course, we have to collaborate together. I bring together extraordinary teams, and I bring together them together based on the talents that they can afford, um, uh, that they can bring to the team to create something extraordinary. But in fact, really, there's uh, four Cs. The fourth C is celebrate. And sometimes celebration means pay, paint in the face. Um, sometimes it, that celebration means a very quiet moment alone, it, which is, you know, sometimes hard to come by. Um, and sometimes it means a thousand ping pong balls in the face. Anybody want to see that again? Nah, it's okay, we'll skip that. So, um, lessons learned. Um, it's important to explore. You know, we are constantly learning what we can about the world around us and trying to incorporate those concepts into our creations. Um, we feel like it's important to keep your eyes open along that way because you never know from whence that inspiration will come. Uh, be willing to make mistakes because of course you're gonna make mistakes anyway. Uh, you have to realize that the small stuff, the little fiddly bits inside it, whether it's a Rube Goldberg machine or what, stinks, but it's absolutely essential to creating an, an extraordinary experience. And that focus is the ability to say no. And that's really important because when building one of these things, it's a whiteboard, an empty space, and it can be filled with anything. And in order to keep, just keep moving forward to hit a deadline or just to satisfy our, our need for completion and creation, you need to be able to get rid of the things that just aren't working and you need to be able to do that fast and dispassionately and move on to the things that are gonna work. Um, so of course, I've just described now the making of a project. This is also, of course, the making of a company. And in my case, it's also the making of a life, and I think that it can be for everyone. Um, and of course, as much as the challenges that we all face and the triumphs that we have, I think it's important to remember that this too shall pass. And with that, I thank you very much for your time.